Okay, okay, we are back with some more Ethel Kane. Next up is Punish. I don't know why I said it like that. It's just kind of evil. Um, lead single off the sophomore album, Perverts. It's called Perverts. <laughs> Interesting. Is this does this album also have like a, a story with it, like the first one did, Preacher's Daughter? Or is it um is she doing something a little bit different this time? No, oh, I don't know. Anyways, we got a music video, so let's check it out. Produced by Ethel Kane as well. Classic. Already scaring me. Are those vocals in the back that are warped making that sound? Like warped and pitched down in the background? No, it's like a creaky rocking chair. That's really good texture. what she said nature chews on me i don't like thinking of that because it's like once we're all dead i guess if you're cremated you're not going to get chewed on but you know what i mean like when we're dead and you don't get cremated like you're getting buried you know what i mean and and worms and maggots are going to eat our bodies you know what i mean like that's ah uh, it's so weird to fucking think about i don't like thinking about that damn delay resonating with itself you know what this kind of reminds me of what's the artist i'm thinking of damn it it's reminding me of something else but instead of being like heavenly it's more of like limbo. You know what I mean? Like it's ethereal, but it's not like ethereal in the sense of that you're in heaven and being embraced by love and stuff. You know what I mean? You're in that limbo state instead where it's like another reality, but you're also just kind of like disassociating and you're that, that numbness and also the, like just the unknown of not knowing things. You know what I mean? It feels like you're in the limbo zone or whatever. <laughs> I love all the reverb and delay. I love that shit. <laughs> so scary. Oh. oh. I'm just passing. I didn't know that. She said 
he was a natural Paul Lachey saying, you won't forget this. And apparently that means the the context is there's a guy named Gary Palche from Louisiana who was convicted for the murder of Jeffrey Dosset. I thought it was going to say Jeffrey Dahmer. Uh, Jeffrey Dosset. Oh, wow. He He's like Diddy. He's like Diddy. Oh, my God. Jesus Christ. The shooting was broadcast on live TV. Oh, my fucking God. What the fuck? This guy, like, pulled a Diddy and, and kidnapped some people. Dude, I got to be careful with the words I say on YouTube. That dude's kids or some shit. Oh my god. Compares the story of Paul Shea and Doucette to the narrator's of to the narrator's own story. Being that he had also mm, a child and was shot, but not killed by the father. Oh damn. Oh damn. We're getting another dark fucking story with this, huh? Jesus Christ. Alright, let's let's keep going. Oh, Her vocals are so pretty. Guys, wasn't there like beef with Ethel Kane and Lana or something? Or was that just made up bullshit? I don't know if it, it's real or not. And honestly, I don't give a fuck. Um, I can appreciate both of them. I can appreciate both of them. I hate when it's like too... I don't like love Ethel Kane, you know what I mean? I'm not like a big Ethel Kane stan, but I do like her music. She has really good fucking music. And you know what I mean? When it's like two artists I respect, I'm not going to pick sides. I think it's just fucking immature. Um, if you're a fan of either artist, you wouldn't be picking sides and, and, and feeling this kind of argument or stand wars type shit i think it's lame as fuck um but dude her vocals are reminding me of lana a lot her vocals are reminding me of lana a lot like maybe like black beauty style you know what i mean where it's just like dark and ethereal and it's like a lot of open space and you just let it breathe like it's so fucking pretty Oh, that scared me. What is going on here where it sounds like the guitars are stacking are they stacking guitars because it sounds like it's opening up i don't know if they have an effect and they're like turning uh an automation on so the effect slowly turns up maybe like a chorus effect perhaps but it also kind of sounds like it's multiple different layers of guitars coming in and stacking because it's getting more and more grand i don't know what's going on here but i love it I wonder what it is. It might be an effect opening. Is it gonna go hard? Oh my god. Those guitars are... Interesting. Considering the context of of what we learned, um, nature's interesting. Considering the context we learned that about like the Doset stuff and how there's like a connection with that with this story, 
and like hearing these guitars really makes it more scary like the guitars are fucking sick but when you take in the context it's like it's more scary and, and it's like you're kind of there in the story and it's making you feel what the person in the story felt right <laughs> Words remind me of Minecraft. If we would just said that. <laughs> That was cinematic, dude. That was so scary. And the way it built up to the end, I just not expecting those guitars to come in either. Also, I really wonder what that sound in the back is, because it sounds like a vocal. Well, let me hear it again. Was it a vocal? Right, right. I said it sounds like a rocking chair, because it kind of does, but it also sounds like a vocal at some points with just a bunch of effects on it to add like a texture layer. Have you been punished? <laughs> It's nice to see my favorite Legend of Zelda YouTuber trying out music. <laughs> what? Does she post like Legend of Zelda videos? Something I appreciate about Ethel Kane is her encouragement of patient listening. We're living in a time where flooded with easily. Yeah, true. Two minute songs, especially with TikTok. Even though like TikTok songs can be really fucking good sometimes. Um, and that's subjective. Some people might completely disagree with me. But that, that is a thing that has been happening in music in general, where artists will make songs specifically for TikTok in terms of the length, because shorter things perform better, like a shorter song. Um, also, because the replayability is easier. Like if you listen to a song for 10 minutes, if it's shorter, you'll hear it like five times. If it's like a five minute song, you'll literally hear it twice. So it's a way to just rank. It's a way to improve numbers and improve money rather than the art itself, uh, which you mean you can have a really artistic two minute song but the whole thing behind it and the the change is because of labels wanting more money that's literally classic capitalism um brat sam brat summer is done the winter belongs to mother <laughs> the ring that she was talking about a year ago finally makes an appearance was that the thing at the end that we saw the great the ring the great dark in proximity to god conspiracy an actual official new track feels unreal. Can't believe it's happening. The monotonous sound of what seems to be an old swing set. Yeah, see, I was thinking like maybe a chair or something. Yeah, so haunting, but feels universal. Very grateful for the exchange of energy as always. I, I do want... Some people may be like, how do you think that's a vocal? How do you think that's a vocal? But like, dude, if you've heard Kid Cudi's song Day and Night, which a lot of people have, the wah, wah, there's like a really weird sound effect. And like, it wasn't until like a few years later or something that Cuddy said that the effect was actually him saying, what, what? And you wouldn't have guessed that. Nobody was going to guess that. Um, so you can really like warp vocals to create something that doesn't even sound like a vocal, um, just to add like another layer or texture to your song. So I really wonder what it is. It, it sounds like it could be that, but it also could be a vocal. I don't know. I'm curious. It's happening to every dash body. It always been this way. And then the guitar comes in. I'm obsessed. The creaking in the background sounds like breathing in and out weekly. Oh my god, that's interesting. Dropping this not only on a new moon, but a Scorpio new moon? Okay, we're not getting into that. <clears throat> After reading your post about the current irony epidemic. <laughs> irony epidemic, so true. Holy fucking shit. I think that has to do with like all the rage baiting idiots out there. Uh, but I could be wrong. I've realized that sometimes I, when I want to comment something, I jump to a joke just because the state of the current internet has deemed comments that appreciate art doing too much and too serious. For once, I feel like I can really just say that this was a beautiful piece of art that means so much to me. I, I don't see this anywhere. The current state of the internet has deemed comments that appreciate art, appreciate art doing too much and are too serious. I... I don't see that anywhere. I'm literally checking out new music every single time I record for the past, what, almost three years? 
I, there are comments that make jokes, but I see a lot of plenty, plenty of comments leaving appreciation and, and stuff for the art of the craft of the artist. And I don't see anyone arguing with them being like, stop being too serious. You're doing it. I've never seen that. I where where has this person been? Their internet's different than the internet I'm on. Whatever's wrong with me, uh, that's just the lyrics. Okay. I'm so grateful I've experienced the phases of Ethel Kane's project. I've been a longtime listener who originally discovered White Silas, then Ethel later. So watching this video made me fucking proud. She got the coins to execute the vision, and wow, I'm speechless at the visuals. Props to Hayden Dub, but Selkin really understood this assignment. Selkin was at the director. They work so well together. I'm super excited to see the future of their work. I'm so glad it exists at the same time as Ethel. Yeah, see, if anything, I feel like comments like this. I'm so glad to exist at, at the same time as this person who is listening in 2024. I'm fucking 90 years old and listening to this. Like, those comments. That's the comments I fucking see everywhere, and I'm fucking tired of it. It's not that deep. I get it. But, like, Jesus Christ, dude. Like, no one gives a fuck. Um, sometimes music speaks louder than words ever can. Very true. That's what the song feels to me. This and Caring Ghosts by Mysterious. mysterious -ic. Both songs hit a deep place inside me and I don't often visit it. This is a masterpiece of all masterpieces. Okay. I like it. I like it. The dark tonality, her singing and stuff. Um, I'm not too familiar with like the context and all of the story behind it, but it sounds like there's a whole nother story back there. Um, and the, vi the visuals for sure. Really fucking creepy. So Ethel Kane core. Very dope, dude. Keep it elite, man. Keep. What will I rate this track? The guitar plot twist was very fucking cool. <laughs> that was really cool. I'll go with like a... I'll go like an 8. I'll go like an 8-8. Eight, eight. I'll go like an 8-8. Eight, eight. It was really cool. But I do kind of wish the heaviness of those guitars came in. Maybe in the next track it does it. But I was hoping like it would go like... Like, not metal. But like, more like... Time! What's that Deftones song? De time! I don't know if that's Death Tones or not, but I kind of just wish it it matched the guitars a little bit and did a little switch up. But it's fine. It was still a fucking awesome song, and there's plenty more, and I'm sure that she does some more cool shit. Anyways, 8-8, very dope song, dude.